It's uncompromising, addictive and often unforgiving with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. It's that time of year again when the quiet New South Wales coastal holiday destination of Coffs Harbour reverberates to the sound of high revving engines and the surrounding hillside is shrouded in dust from the world's greatest motorsport spectacle on gravel, the World Rally Championship. It's round 10 of the WRC and round 5 of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Hi everybody, I'm Greg Rust. Welcome to Coates Hire Coffs Coast Rally Australia. In today's show, we'll feature the classic clash between Toyota, Datsun and Porsche and showcase a myriad of models from a bygone era of rallying. The East Coast Bull Bar's four-wheel drive national series is full of Subarus and Mitsubishis, every driver eager to grab top billing at Australia's highest profile rallying event. And of course, we have the all-important Armour All Power Stage. Just five points separate the top two outright championship cars. That's just what's on offer as a bonus today for the fastest two-wheel drive car. And it's coming up right now. Last round, the battle for honours came down to the Mazda of Reeves and the Renault of Pedder. After crashing out of the previous Armour All Power Stage, Brendan Reeves was keen to make amends. Scott Petter had found form and his Walkinshaw Performance Clio was fast. Too fast, in fact, for the Rally School Mazda 2. And he secured maximum bonus points. As always, only championship registered competitors can qualify for the Armour All Power Stage. And they have just one qualifying run to get themselves into the fastest five. We're here for the running of the fifth Armour All Power Stage of the year. This is where competitors can earn bonus points before they start the rally proper. The first half of the year, it's been Brendan Reeves, but the hard-charging Scott Petter has whittled away his lead and is now leading by five points. This part of the championship, every point is critical. This stage is worth five bonus points. There's plenty at stake and plenty on offer. Here's a snapshot of how the stage looks. A long straight off the start line introduces the humps that are a feature of this stage. After a tight left at New South Wales Now, it's down across three humps to reach the first split, the Can-Am Crumps. The undulating gravel roads lead to the second split at Polaris Pass and then on to the tightest turn, Coates Corner. The second chance to stretch their legs happens downhill entering a wide but rough sweeper before the finish comes up at 2.5 kilometres. Ross Dunkerton's been driving the course. Here he is now with Dean Herridge. Nobody better oh. qualified than our five times national champion Ross Dunkerton who's just gone through the Armour All Power Stage. You're looking a bit flustered, mate. What is it like? You know, all the power stages we've done so far, I would have loved to run at competition speed. This one, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> have really? A, have a look at this. The whole way through, the course is just littered with stones, mm. and there is the odd jump. In fact, hundreds of jumps. In fact, there's one jump. I reckon if they hit it hard, they'd finish up in South Australia. That's how high it is. So we've really thrown a cat amongst the pigeons. As you say, sometimes we're on tarmac, sometimes yep. a traditional rally stage. Yep. This one you're saying rough and, and very tricky to get through to not even wreck the car. Rough and tough, yeah. Conditions are changing and those jumps, depending on how hard you hit them, on whether your car is going to land properly, whoever's got the best car for jumping will win this stage. So that could make or break it. So it's not just on outright pace, it's about picking the lines, picking the best spots, looking after your car exactly. and coming with a good time. Exactly, you can't come up to a jump and de-accelerate. As you come up to it, it's like a motorbike, you've got to give it the big number so it jumps and lands perfectly. <laughs> so there you go, Ross Duncan wants to get in the commentary box, which is a little bit rare. Sounds like it's going to be a very interesting qualifying run, Rusty, and it's back to you to recap it. Thanks, Dean. The Walkinshaw Performance Renault was on fire from the start, making light work of the humps. But a miscalculation cost them dearly. 
Without the two spare tyres from testing yesterday, the Clio was 50 kilos lighter in the rear and around she came. I didn't think it was going to be that bad down the hill and uh, just kicked it in the air and turned it around. So I don't think we'll be in the, I don't think we'll be in the power stage this time. With only one qualifier, the writing was on the wall. He and Dale Moskett had to wait and watch as the following drivers each bettered their time. No such problems for Brendan Reeves and Rhiannon Jill Semino. Clean and tidy, the Rally School Mazda 2 immediately set the standard, 1 minute 49.1. Michael Bowden was next on the road, but wasn't taking any risks in the VW Polo. At 1 minute 55 dead, he was fourth fastest, but into the final. Steve McKenzie returned this round with his new OptiCoat Fiesta, but despite a slow start, squeezed into fifth place, point three behind the Warhope Warrior. That didn't leave much for the Repco Polo also returning after missing last round, but Mick Patton and Bernie Webb were still settling into the rhythm and not about to risk it all so early. Team Citroen stormed into the final though. Tony Sullins quicker over the short sprint stage by 0.4 over his teammate Adrian Coppola. So, Steve McKenzie, Michael Bowden, Adrian Coppin, Tony Sullins and Brendan Reeves line up for the bonus championship points in the Armour All Power Stage. Coming to you from the Coates Hire Rally Australia in Coffs Harbour. Welcome back to the holiday destination of Coffs Harbour. Despite the tranquility of the New South Wales North Coast, one week a year it bursts into life with Coates Hire Rally Australia. And it's the hinterland where all the action is happening right now. Qualifying in the Armour All Power Stage wasn't kind to Mick Patton, so no points on offer for the man flying the flag for Repco. He's with Dean on the start line. So our wildcard entries, it's Mick Patton and Bernie Webb. Great to have you guys back after missing South Australia, mate. Must be good to get back behind the wheel. Yeah, it is. We've done a lot of uh, component testing in the uh, six weeks that we uh, unfortunately missed SA. But the car's really good. We feel quite comfortable with it. But um, yeah, it's a long weekend to go, mate, so we're just going to do our thing and, and tick some boxes this weekend for sure. Great to have the Repco Rally team back and good luck through here. Thanks, guys. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Listen to the VW hunting for traction there as they launch off the start line. Lots of experience. Bernie Webb in the passenger seat there. They attack this stage. The first of the jumps is a couple going up to the left, first left hander. Through the New South Wales now corner, and they will head to what we've deemed or called Can Am Crump. This is a bit of a hybrid rally word that we, we owe Dale Moskett for the explanation. Exactly. And the second one is the one that's the one that's the highest of those three. Crest and hump all blended together. They're through there nicely. Good work so far. Little nose heavy in its behaviour. This car. Rusty, they've got to keep the boot in order to keep those shock absorbers on uh, full extension so they can't come in on the brakes, otherwise they'll nosedive in and he's doing a good job here at the moment. That's the super impressive part as we weave through Pedder's Pinch. Just a nice line there too, Ross. Very yep. centred on the road, weren't they? Short seven hole in the half length to left here. Over small hump. Into pit nine left right. So through Polaris Pass, and that's the benchmark time that we'll be using to compare with other competitors, the splits as this special stage unfolds. Heading up now to the high-tech oils speed trap as well. We'll get an idea of what kind of top speed through these frightening trees on the Coffs Coast, but they are attacking, no doubt about it. It's a fast run down through here, Rusty. They've got to keep the, the boot in it to keep those shockers on full full extension, otherwise they'll go nose diving into the into the crest. 115k an hour at the high-tech oils speed trap. This is a tidy run from this combination. You could almost tell from the way Bernie Webb was looking at the beginning of the stage. He just wanted his driver to bring it home nicely. 156.7. That is the time to beat. We've uh, misjudged one of the big humps, but um, nah, apart from that, it was fine. Yeah, we're just here uh, blowing the cobwebs out, getting ready for the big stuff uh, over the next three days, essentially. 
So given what he said there, let's put that under a bit of analysis on yep. the replays. He felt it was untidy here. And then through Pedder's pinch. Still, all in all, a reasonably tidy run as we go back to Dean. Great to have the McKenzie brothers back, both Stephen and Brent, in the brand new car, mate, debuting here on a big rally and uh, just lobbed into the power stage, mate. Well done. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Um, yeah, excellent to have the new car finally out. Um, it's been a long time coming. We didn't have as much testing, I guess, as we planned, but we're here. We put in a reasonable time for the first stage, and yeah, I'm happy so far. Smile says it all, guys. Good luck to them on this run. Five, four, three, two. Lots to smile about, Dean. This is a terrific looking car, Ross. They launch away. He's a good young young boy, this guy. He's uh, come up through the ranks, and uh, it's good to see him in this car. And I'm sure he'll do it proud. He's uh, testing these jumps. As he said, he doesn't know how hard to hit them, but he's certainly hit, having a try here at the moment. Through New South Wales now. That looks very looks neat. Looks good. Looks good. Six right. Then care jump into braking on jump into six right. Oh, yeah. Plenty of air there and landed nicely. What appears to be impressive here, Ross, with our opening two runs is how well, as we check the split there, the can and split, just how well they are absorbing the bumps and maintaining full speed. You've got to remember, these are front-wheel drive cars, so they really, you know, that they are not as good as a real-wheel drive car to jump. They sort of are, are a bit more difficult, and uh, the cars are landing nicely. Those uh, suspension setups are very, very good in this car. Jump into six right, four left, then crest into eight right. Rigging that wheel comes in nice and tight through the uh, through the left hander. Significantly up at Polaris. Look at that on the split versus Patton and Webb. And you've got to say these two are being ultra calm. Listen to Brent in the passenger seat there. He was quick through that left hander. Very very quick. This is going to be a very fast time, Rusty. High tech oils, the top speed before 115. Look at that. What a big difference oh. in the top speed. These guys are on the limit. 100, 8 right into 7 left into finish. Well, he's certainly carrying the speed. The car's jumping well. Through the finishing time here. And it's a good time. 150. Six seconds quicker. And Brent's voice, even when they were on the limit, did not change. Good work. I'm happy with that time. There's still a bit more in it. Um, but I think one of the jumps we hit a bit hard. I'm not sure what's going on the front end. It could have been down there. So I'll have a look after this. See if it took it well or, or not. <laughs> um, and there was a problem with the mic then. And it was a lot of crackle. So a little bit of interruption. But I think we put in a reasonable time here. Geez, a hard marker. Let's take a look at some of this on the replay. This is a good performance. Comes a little, little bit nose heavy, but uh, down through here, he looked good. Look at that. So the McKenzie brothers, Steve and Brent, displace Mick Patton and Bernie Webb in the Armour All top spot. Can they remain there? Michael Bowden wants to change all that right after the break. You are watching the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. While preparations are getting underway in beautiful Coffs Harbour for Coates Hire Rally Australia, the action has already begun out in the forest for the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Currently, our leader in the Armour All Power Stage is Steve McKenzie, but Dean is at the start with the Warhope Warrior, and he wants to change all that. Dino? Michael Bowden and Helen Cheers qualified just outside the top three. Points up for grabs, mate. This stage is a bit of you, isn't it? Yeah, look, I'm going to have a bit more of an attack now. I know how hard I can hit those jumps. It was a bit of a touch and go thing when we first done it. But yeah, look, it's totally different when you're doing notes in a road car with shitty old suspension and, and you, you know, we can hit it at this and yeah. But uh, look, I felt really happy with it and Helen even commented how she, she thought it would handle it pretty good. So we'll, we'll have a bit more of a go this time. Now, you're fairly close to the whippersnappers in front, and they've just done a 150.3. They've uh, thrown down the Gortland, had a real crack through there, so they must have been pretty committed on that stage to get that time. Yeah, that's for sure. That's, that's a really good stage time, and um, yeah, I just hope I can match it or, or better it. Come on, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> Fighting Michael Bowden, Helen. Cheers. Good luck, guys, with this one. Thank you.
It's a really interesting mindset, isn't it? Just the one qualifying run, but that is enough to build the confidence of someone like this who knows how to win championships. Away he goes. They've done all the work on this car, and of course, as he said, he's already had the qualifying run. He knows how the car jumps, so he's going to give it to her, and he is doing just that. Right entry, two left. 60, right entry, two left. Helen Cheers 80, in the passenger seat. Fast jump, 80, fast Michael Bowden nice and tight on the entry. Fast they work jump, now towards the jump. crumps, the can and crumps. Look at this. This is the one. Let's see how he goes over that. He's not, no, he's not going as fast. I don't think it's McKenzie through there. He's down at the split. But his time, he's got time to recover here, Michael Bowden. Look at the eyes, look at the determination. Uh, the biggest jump's coming up, so uh, that depends on how much courage he's got. Left, right through there. It's quite tricky up through the Petters area there as it comes down. Lovely line through the Petters pinch. Four and a half right. Four and a half right into three left. Yup. 40. Round six. Then five and a half right. Still down at the split, but he's recovered some time, as you can see there. The gap was bigger before. Can he, can this pairing in the final split recover that and move to the top of the Armour All Power stage? Big mission. Can they get there? Anybody that can do it can be Michael Bowden, and he's having a big try, but can he pull it back? One twenty-four k's an hour for our last pairing through at the high-tech split. Just down, fractionally, 4 k's an hour. He's not going to do it. 100. Six wide. 100. Six wide. And five left. This is going to be close. It doesn't seem as though they'll do it, but there's not much in it. They lost it up in the top corner there. Yeah, they got us, I'm pretty sure. The McKenzies will stay in the top spot for now. Nah, I lost it up on, on one of the corners, went in a bit too deep, and on the rock, Lucy stuff, mate. Backed it in. I knew where the time was, but hey, it was worth the crap. <laughs> well, let's this take is, a closer look here. That's where he lost a bit of time there, I think, uh, Rusty. A little bit of understeer as he went into that corner. Well, no change in the Armour All Power Stage lead. Stephen Brent McKenzie, but the Citroens want that spot. Dean? Team Citroen Australia, Adrian Kopp and Tim Batten. Qualified third, maybe you're gobsmacked. You've even got in. You've got a bit of an issue that you're dealing with. Yeah, we've got a brand new gearbox for this one, Dino, and it arrived yesterday out of customs and freight, so it's been a frantic week, but we've got a bit of an issue with the voltage, so I didn't actually, couldn't select second or third gear, so I'm actually amazed that we've got here in third, and um, it's, you know, we'll see how we go through here, but I don't think it's going to uh, going to fix itself anytime soon. It's sort of an electronic issue, it sort of does grab a gear, but it doesn't know that it's grabbed a gear, so the electronics is the bit that's playing up, is that correct? Yeah, that's right, you sort of, 10 grabs and maybe it grabs it and sometimes it doesn't and then on the down downshift so look it's just one of those things we've just got to persist and, and get through here and get it sorted before we start tomorrow. Yeah like I said did a good job in qualifying mate good luck for the final run here mate. Thanks Dino. It's a bit tricky for them guys if they're going to go and push they've got a bit to play for. Yeah absolutely what about that? Electronics Rusty how about that? Great work by the team we've got to say given the delayed arrival of this gearbox through customs as Adrian said there to even to get it done and hopefully they can get this car sorted for the for the rest of the weekend but it's a huge challenge for this pairing he and tim batten as they attack the power stage as you can see on the dash it's, uh, it's actually selecting the uh, the gears all right there he's up into fifth 70 big jump oh, there's a problem there it's starting to flash on and off it doesn't look as quick through the crumps we go. Wow, good effort though. That said, at the split, they've got some time. So yep. that's positive, just ahead. Well, he's back into fifth gear, so he is having a big try. Flat right from a flap into short six left. Hug six right on crest and the six left over jump. 40. Sweet through Pedders, it looked good, the car. Four and a half left of the jump. Now the crucial split. Will the McKenzies be able to retain it? Not for now, because Adrian Coppin and Tim Batten for now are in the lead of this Armour All Power stage. What a result that would be given the, the complications with this car. Right on crest opens 40. 
Slow five on, five right on Chris Down. Looking comfortable behind the wheel. Break, six left. Three, the the, threading the needle through there. Point down point through. Point past the Kumos. Not bad. It's not, bad. It's not our yep. fastest so far in the stage. That's very reasonable, all things considered. Short six right into six left. Super close here. It's going to be just. Oh. They do it. Well done to Adrian Coppin and Tim Batten. Against the odds, they move to the top of the ladder. That was worse than the last one, but we still went faster. But it just wouldn't get out of second gear, so she just got to rev the whole way. And what can we do? We just got to try and get it sorted for tomorrow. So it's an absolute handful, but he has a dip. He has a go. Look at the look at the way. It's moving. Constantly shifting, trying, hoping to find it. It's on the paddles there. You can see him flicking them backwards and forwards. The sequential gearbox, of course. So somehow Adrian Coppin and Tim Batten sneak in front of the Opticote Fiesta to guarantee at least one point for third. But the second team Citroen car is with Dean right now looking for that same spot. And that's coming up after the break. Coffs Harbour is renowned for the biggest banana in the country, but this weekend it's the biggest rally in the country that is the centre of attention. Right now, the best bunch of drivers in the East Coast Bull Bars ARC is assembled in the forest hinterland to find out for the bonus points in the Armour All Power Stage, and Dean is with our next competitor. The second of the Citrus is Tony Sullins and Julia Barclay. Great run, second in the qualifying. You have to beat your teammate to get on top, mate. He's uh, pumped out a 149.6. It's about three seconds quicker than the previous run, but in this stage, I think you can do it, can you? I hope so. <laughs> He's obviously having a go, but um, yeah, we will too. Yeah. Um, tough stage, that's a balance between doing some drama to the car or damaging the car and getting the time, isn't it? Oh, definitely. My, my mission is to keep the car in one piece for the rest of the rally. I don't mind if, we, if he beats us, but, you know, I'll, I'll definitely... We want to have a go if we can. Yeah. I can see it in your eyes, mate. You can have a go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Good luck to them both. We're both suffering with the flu, so they're doing a fantastic job of the qualifying. Good luck in this run. Five, Good observation, four, Dean, and they're like that, aren't they? Super competitive pairing, five, these two. And he doesn't five, mind if he's beaten. I don't think so. <laughs> like five and a half. Up to the very first jump of the stage. Oh, it's only a small one as they pull their way up the hill. Every round of the Australian Championship has a power stage, but each seemed to have something unique. Gee, this is a challenging power stage. Through New South Wales now, and they work towards the Can-Am crumps, the crest and humps together that really knock these cars around. Didn't get too much air, so, uh, and he's carrying a reasonable amount of speed through there, Rusty. So ahead of his teammate, crucially ahead of his yeah. teammate at the first split. You could pick that. He's, uh, he's doing well. Short lap by Bluff into Hug Right 5 over. Great little cars, these, of course. Uh, it's been a welcome addition to the championship this year, hasn't it? Very well presented and prepared. Very successful in Europe, of course. And left for Hump. And keep left to Crest. 30. Look at this. From the Polaris split, they've been able to find even more time and improve on that lead over their teammate. Oh, oh what he came down very hard on the right hand there and snuck through there very nicely. Into brow, into right five, into left four and a half, narrows, 30. Cut that five and a half over hub. Very nicely done. High tech, fastest so far, 127 oh. kilometres an hour and that's reflected in the landing. He is on fire at the moment. This is going to be a very fast time. These guys look like they're going to move to the top of the ladder, but it just underscores the strength, the how Whoa. impressive that drive was for Coppin and Batten with the problems they had to uh, had to deal with. Well done. Oh, well, was, um, I could have gone a bit harder in a few spots, but I didn't want to hurt the car, so... No, exactly. Exactly. Long event to go. 148, that's a good time. Done them by 1.4. Oh, really? Is it? Well done. You I had a bit of a game. That? I had a bit of a go and I thought, well, I didn't do anything stupid, but we still, um, you know, pushed on pretty hard. You've really got a longer distance ahead of us. I don't, I don't want to fix the car this afternoon, that's for sure. It's a really wise approach from this pairing as we check the replay. I bet he'd like to have another go. <laughs> Good time that they found that, out this oh, was... That was a big jump there, Rusty. 
So, one out and one in. Citroen still the top spot of this Armour All Power stage with Brendan Reeves to come in the Rally School Mazda 2. Sullins is not confident. <laughs> I reckon he'll beat us by a few. Yeah, he's, he's got his head around it. In the first, his first run through, he was at the far, you know, front end of the field, so it'll be a swept line now. And he's had a bit of a look at it. The car's a good thing. He's master. I think it'll go right. Our fastest qualifiers, Brendan Rees and Rihanna Gelsomino. Congratulations on the qualifying. You're going to have to go about 1.1 seconds faster than your qualifying run to take Tony Sullins, who so just did a 148.2. So great time by them. Points on the line. Plenty on offer for you on this stage, mate. Yeah, like our qualifying run went pretty good. We hadn't had much of a pre-event test, so that was really my test, and, and the car feels good. I did feel like I got a flat front right, but it wasn't there, so we sort of backed off a bit. So hopefully we can improve on the second half of the stage, and these guys in front of me have swept a good line too while I was on those rocks uh, this morning, so we'll see how we go. But I did fire Tony up before the stage. He said he was going to push. <laughs> Which is great for them, and you've got a battle on. The big news was, of course, that Scotty didn't qualify, you're five points behind in the championship. If you can get this done on this stage, you'll be tied going into the start of the weekend. That's a pretty big carrot for you. That would mean a lot for us. And we haven't had a great last couple of power stages, so to get a win means everything. Good start to a big event. Feeling the pressure of this? It's like you said, you can't just dawdle through here. So there's a little bit of pressure on in this car, I'm sure. Yeah, I, it doesn't really feel like pressure. I'm just keen to get out there and, and run a clean stage. You know, it's a lot of fun. There's about 15 jumps in here, <laughs> and the Mazda's got the zoom-zoom factor, so it's great. <laughs> I like all the jump-jump factor. Good luck, guys. Go get them. This will be a good one, Rusty. Hold on to your hat, because he's going to have a go. Love the sound of that car in full flight. Maximum revs as they launch away from the start line. As he said, the uh, track's been swept. That means that they've swept all the loose stones off. So now he's got solid uh, adhesion, so he can get plenty of uh, plenty of traction from the Mazda. Oh, nicely set up and pulls it around in a, a Scandinavian flick. Fastest through that corner by far. Now toward the Can-Am crumps. We'll get our first split soon. Listen to the revs. That's the biggest jump on the third jump we've seen so far. Thought it might be higher than that. It's two tenths, but they are ahead. They've moved to the top spot for now. He's ringing its neck as he went past the uh, our cameras there. Spectacular to watch, and that is the nature of Brendan Reeves, the rally driver. He's always very good at these power stages. Good, and, uh, good gain yep. through the second split, Ross, at Polaris. Oh. Just oh. wild. He has got this one, I think, in the bag because uh, he's only got uh, halfway through, but he's got time up now and uh, doing it nicely. And doesn't it set up a fascinating prospect for the back end of this championship? Oh. Remember, they'll be tied. Good effort there at the high-tech. Speed trap, 125 k's an hour. To think that the key guys fighting for the championship will be neck and neck in points terms if these guys can do it. They're nearly there. Yep, he needs it, and he'll come through, and he has got five points. 145. 6. So in the end, three seconds. Boy, they've made some gains over the runs on this stage. Yeah, it felt really good in there. The boys had swept the line for us. The first run, it was the other way around, Scott and us for cleaning. Uh, but the notes worked well considering we didn't really get a test before this event. This is our test. Uh, really happy, tyres work good and plenty of moisture in the road, which is great looking at the rally. Yeah, the heart's definitely racing, that's for sure. <laughs> My hands are shaking. I think there's about 15 jumps and we took a lot of them flat, which is a lot of fun in this car. Um, the G2s do it really well, so can't wait to get the cash and the prize. So they had to go for points and that's exactly what they did. A joy to watch as Brendan Reeves and Rhiannon win the Armour All Power Stage. Now we're going to do the Power Stage dance. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt who's on top in the Power Stage. Brendan Reeves and Rhiannon Gel Cimino. Very nice. Might start a new trend. We could do that. The Rusty. Armour All Power Stage dance. And they've closed the gap on Scott Petter. Yeah, it's equal points now, so that's great. Uh, we didn't expect that we'd get to start like that, so... It's a good feeling that the car feels excellent going into the rally, which is always a great positive. Um, so, yeah, look, we've done everything we can from here. 
Uh, the car setup's good, I don't think we need to change anything. Uh, just clean it up for the start tomorrow and see how we go on the stages. I think the conditions are going to be quite hard on the tyres. Like we found that out last year, there's quite a few rocks and it's going to be quite hot out there. So we've got to play the tyre strategy quite well with the Kumos this weekend and do everything we can. There's a lot of points on offer. We have three separate legs, 20 points for each leg. Uh, 40 points for overall rally. We've got five points here and you've also got a bonus point for a stage win, so there's a lot to come. The Armour All Winners Prize presented by the General Manager of East Coast Bull Bars, Paul Teresi. That's it for another Armour All Power stage. Pedder and Reeves now dead heated in the championship lead. Coming up, it's Subaru versus Mitsubishi. It's round five of the East Coast Bull Bars four-wheel drive national series. Gets underway in earnest in just a few moments. Welcome back to the Coats Hire Coffs Coast Rally Australia. It was the fifth round of the East Coast Bull Bars four-wheel drive national series and a record turnout. The best three events from the season win this competition and right now the stakes are in favour of Michael Bailey and Henry Knott. They were the only competitors in the top five campaigning this event. So for sure that top five would be a very different makeup at the end of the weekend. Favourite for the weekend, though, was eighth-placed Richie Dalton. His intentions clear. We're out, definitely a podium, man. A bit nervous at the moment because it's been a long time since I've sat in the car. So just, just get a feel for the first couple of stages and just we'll play it by ear and see how it goes. Dalton, with John Allen pointing the way, didn't look back, putting more than a second a K on their opposition through stage one. Last year, Henry Knott crashed out of this event in his two-wheel drive BMW. He returned with an extra set of drive wheels for unfinished business. I've got a score to settle up here. This is my third crack at this, and I'm going to beat it. If Dalton had not by 17 in SS1, then the roles were reversed next stage. Showing age was no barrier, Michael Bailey fueled up his new VP Ultimate Evo 9 displacing them both to grab the top spot through the first pass of Newry in leg one. Oh, uh, you know, when you turn 50, mate, you're a super fit athlete like myself. That, was, uh, that wasn't too bad, actually. Must be the power steering, it's a little less input my age. It was the turbo hose on the Mitsubishi that needed inputting after it blew off and dropped them from third to seventh. Dalton again took honours through the first repeat of the morning stages, Hyde's Creek. The Irish pilot was not frightened to have a go on the new stage for 2014. His reward, a 15-second overall lead. Andrew Penny was just pleased to be at the finish, even dragging his rear muffler. His replacement Subaru WRX hot off the assembly line after his last car was burnt to the ground in a rally just two months ago. A Tassie Devil weighed into the competition through the final gravel stage of the day. Marcus Walcombe, two seconds quicker than Dalton. He and brother Scott repeat the feat through the super special stage in downtown Coffs Harbour. The heat was on in leg two and the Dalton-Allen combination proved too good for both Marcus Walcombe and Henry Knott through Nambucca 1. Turn two left, hog with ditch. 70, tempo change. The longer stage of the event became even longer for Mike Bailey when the front diff broke and he and Matt Harriet were forced to crawl through the stage and Valor back to service. 14 kilometres to go. It was weekend over for the BP Ultimate team. The Walken snuck in by two seconds for a stage win across Valor on the limit. The return to the 49-kilometre Nambucca stage was the undoing for Andrew Penny, the mercury rising in the engine, forcing a go-slow. Henry Knott might have been preserving his chances at his South Australian Championship, but the gnarly private road resembling a goat track that joined the two sweeping Shire roads was doing all it could to stop him. Richie Dalton, though, had thrown caution to the wind, fastest again. The final day brought Henry not unstuck at the creek crossings in Shipman's. His third outright was quickly watered down to eighth, stopping at both hazards. 
No problems for Dalton though, who powered on to first in stage ahead of Marcus Balkan. Richie Dalton wasn't the only Irishman in the four-wheel drive pack. He convinced his mate, Justin Hatton, to try his hand at rallying, so he brought a left-hand drive Evo 9 a week before the event and stepped up to the plate. Remarkably, a stage win last night at the Super Special was accomplished because it was short enough he didn't need pace notes. But through Bucker, he claimed a remarkable fourth fastest despite the rookie being in his first rally and not yet really understanding pace notes. The Fibertech medical machine of Gerald Schofield clattered and clunk through Bucker and back to service, holding on to his third position despite a broken bolt in the diff housing. Something's gone wrong in the rear end. Uh, the guys say it's fairly simple. I'm hoping it's going to be because uh, the guy behind me is catching me fairly quickly. So we get this fixed and uh, we'll be on that podium. The guy chasing him down was Paul Newman, who was ticking off his bucket list, waiting 20 years to go rallying in the ARC and doing it with his son and mate, Sean. Steering the Auto Pro Evo 6 were Ron and Joe Moore. Moving up from club rallying meant learning pace notes for this event. A test for any relationship, but the husband and wife were good, fifth outright. And the Subway-sponsored Subi was piloted by Mark Beard, stepping from his familiar Datsun 1200 coupe into the non-turbo RS model. Beard's reward came from beating any turbo car in the field. His nemesis was the shipman time clock that seemed eager to penalise him for jumping both starts. There was no stopping Richie Dalton, though, despite oil leaking into the transfer case, making controlling the front wheels almost impossible. He nursed his shamrock entry to victory and the top of the East Coast Bull Bars four-wheel drive national series. Henry Knott was left to lament his watery finish. That meant second in the series, while Jared Schofield grabbed points and fourth outright ahead of Michael Bailey to round out the five. Coming up next, Will the Australian Classic Royalty be knocked off their thrones at Coates Hire Rally Australia? We'll find out right after the break. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars ARC. Without doubt, the Coates Hire Coffs Coast Rally was a draw card for crews and crowd alike, and that extended to the Classics. Topping the bill, as usual, were Neil Bates and Coral Taylor in their Toyota Celica, dominating the event from the start, despite some big jumps that took their toll. Yeah, obviously for a wild rally car they handle it no problems at all, but uh, tough work on other cars. Four over F hump. Yeah, four over hump. Yep. The event was tough on other cars all right, none more so than Claude Murray. <laughs> The Datsun P510 pilot had previously taken the fight up to Bates, but this time, the stop short. All over. Clay Badenoch challenged the master early on with the new Bates-built engine pushing his Celica into second. But he was ground down with a howling rear diff. In the second stage there, it got worse and we just startled, well, we just short shifted. And then, um, yeah, some, something let go there. Phil Casper spirited his way into second behind Bates, the Ghost Rally Sport team appeared from nowhere and held on to the Toyota coattail until early in leg three when the Pinto coughed and spluttered at Shipman's Creek Crossing. Ed Mulligan broke a tail shaft early in his escort, returning for leg two only to suffer from a loss of power in the BDA engine. Mulligan was not perturbed by the setback. It's not much better today, we've only got a little bit of a power loss today yeah. and when you in our wait for age over 60s handicap, I'm still in front. Troubles plagued Troy O'Doherty right from the outset, sidelined after hitting a bridge early in SS1, but the car began stopping without explanation, only to restart just as inexplicably. Still, he and wife Penny did manhandle the V8 Triumph to the end, even if it was as tail end Charlie. No struggle for Matt Ruggles in the other TR7. A spot of consistency rewarding him with second for the weekend. And with the luck of the Irish, Michael O'Hagan in only his fourth rally and second on pace notes was on the improve all weekend. Fifth day one, fourth day two. Finally crossing the line for third despite a failing diff that was doing everything to stop him. 
Jeff David wasn't his usual consistent self, something was keeping the Porsche driver away from the top of the field, but not far enough away from the bank. I thought I was going to have a half spin and I was actually getting ready to pull reverse to back up uh, and then continue on just thinking oh well I've lost a few seconds there and then the car just moved forward a bit and grabbed the bank and tipped us over. The smallest car in the field couldn't match Neil Bates in the forest. But on the tight super special, Steve Arnold was just 0.2 of a second behind the classic champ on both passes. And holding down the fort for rotaries, Mark and Coral Fitton's RX2 provided plenty of highs and lows for a family affair. Eventually placed sixth after a hard three days of rallying. Outside the classification, three cars strutted their stuff with varying degrees of success as invitational entries. Bill Cromarty's low, shearing an axle in his Lancer, provided his high, spectating the WRC cars in full flight. The bulldust from the very same World Rally cars sidelined Brett Stevens, but even a failing clutch couldn't dampen the Bluebird driver's enthusiasm. So we are down, but we've completed every stage, so that's pretty good. It's not often you get to mix with the big boys. I mean, we're not mixing with them, but you know, in the same parks and all of that, so you can't do that in Formula One or anything. After two years in the build, Mal Keogh's Audi Quattro was finally in action. I've only been driving it for basically two days, so um, I'm learning fast. Fast was an understatement. The Quattro living up to its reputation for speed and entertainment. The, the acceleration and the launch on them is just incredible. As fast as the Quattro was, though, it was Neil Bates and Coral Taylor who drove another faultless rally, demonstrating why they are the king and queen of the classics. That wraps up the first part of our coverage from the Coates Hire Coffs Coast Rally Australia. Watch out for all the action from the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship in our program coming up same time next week. Just check your local guides for details. And as we always say, to keep up to date, just head to the website, rally.com.au. I'm Greg Rust. We'll catch you next time. Bye for now. <laughs> Today's coverage is made possible by Destination New South Wales, Kumo Tyre, Pedder Suspension, Armour, Coats Tyre, Can Am, Polaris, High Tech Oils, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars. <laughs>